I have such a cool interview. Okay, ready, ready, ready. TypeScript has helped build JavaScript projects at like tiny scale and huge scale all over the world. And here to share the latest is program manager on the team, Daniel Rosenwasser. Hello, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us here at Build. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It is a pleasure to have you join us, actually, and you know our shenanigans. We've barely broken things. Just, just letting you, know, <laughs> just letting you know. Okay. So for our audience, do you mind telling everyone who you are and what you do? Um, well, as you know, I'm Daniel Rosenwasser, as you just heard. Uh, but uh, I, I act as I am the program manager on the TypeScript team uh, here at Microsoft, where I work on anything between TypeScript, the language itself. I contribute to ECMAScript, the spec for JavaScript. And I also, um, you know, help contribute to the to the editor support that you all know and love for TypeScript and JavaScript in the Visual Studio family of products. So VS, VS Code, et cetera. Okay, so I think TypeScript is such an inclusive language. It might actually be the most inclusive language, which kind of kills me a little bit because it's C++ people. But I come from an object-oriented background, right? And I love it. And so many people don't come from an object-oriented background, but also love it. Usually, you know, languages are holy war. Either you're object-oriented people or you're not object-oriented people. But TypeScript is something that everyone loves. Can you please share a little bit about why that is and how TypeScript came to be this? Uh, it's it's a really good question, actually. Uh, I think that TypeScript has to kind of come at the at a, at a, at a language design um, that that needs to bridge the gap, right? Like a big part of you know one of those holy wars that you see in programming and programming languages is dynamic versus static languages, right? Um, and 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 TypeScript has to bridge those together. But likewise, JavaScript is already a language that has to kind of or does accommodate, you know, whether you're functional or object oriented. Um, that's something that to model a typed version of JavaScript, you need to model all of that. So when we first started out, we actually kind of came in and brought what we knew in the OO space, object oriented space. Um, and then more and more, we, we learned about different different patterns and paradigms because we were writing TypeScript and JavaScript ourselves and understood it better and, and learned it. And so we we really took what our users said to heart and tried to like address them um, and their concerns and met the community where they were. Okay, that is awesome. So right now we're here at Build, and you know, Build is a time all, you always announce the coolest things. What is new for our audience right now in TypeScript land? So uh, just you know, a couple hours ago, we just released TypeScript 4.3. Um, oh. Yeah, so I'm extremely excited about that. Um, a lot of great new features, optimizations, um, awesome editing functionality that's come down the line. Uh, but one of the really cool things that I want to talk about is something called the override keyword um, and and a stricter check for the override keyword that I'd like to just dive into if we can go into a demo. Oh, please. Okay, by the way, I requested the override keyword, so I, I want to see this, definitely. <laughs> Awesome. Let's so uh, one of the one of the things that um, you know, let's say you have a base class and derived class mm -hmm. of some sort. Yeah. Um, now you might have a method in the derived class that overrides the one in the base class, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's a bit of a snag there, right? You're kind of making this implicit contract because let's say you ever decided to rename something um, in the base class, right? So if anyone now tries to call this like do something method, um, they're going to hit they're they're basically not going to get the derived one, right? And so now you end up with a useless method in the base in the derived class that no one's using accidentally. And so what we did is we added a new keyword called um, override. And so now what you can actually do is uh, you can you can prefix the derived method with the override keyword and say um, this is intended to to override something in the base class. And if it's not, I want to get an error. And so now you you will actually get an error here. Um, and you'll know that, hey, I need to actually correct the spelling of this because someone in the base renamed something um, but didn't didn't bother to rename it up here. Um, and so, you know, there's there's that problem, but then there's a dual problem of, well, you know, let's say I have a, a, method, a method in the derived class, but someone adds one in the base class and it has the same name. Well, the way that jobs works is that you accidentally could clobber the one in the base class and now, um, you might not even know about it until sometime later at runtime, maybe in production. And so what we added is a new flag um, to help catch that case where you need to explicitly add an override keyword in those cases. 
So if you ever override a method in a derived class, you need to add that keyword, and otherwise it's an error. And so that flag is now called no implicit override. And as you just saw, we were able to like get a quick fix in there and, and just add it in there once we got the error message. And that's kind of the magic that we're trying to add uh, to our editors, just to like beef up uh, language parity. I love that. I think that's it's fantastic. And so many people are going to use this. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Cassie, Cassie Brevue on our team, who actually pointed me to TypeScript when I was trying to learn a scripting language. She said, just use TypeScript. It's so familiar to you without having to you know, break out of the paradigms and the syntax and things you're used to. So, so many people have been brought to TypeScript because it, of its inclusivity and because you co-create with the community and put in all of these requests. So you, you all drop features like so casually like weekly, it feels like weekly. It's so cool, so cool. Yeah, so we, we. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I get giddy mm -hmm. just thinking about it, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I think you know one of the things there is that we release every three months, and oh, that you know really? we we don't expect everyone to just jump on it, mm -hmm. right? Um, we encourage it, uh, but <laughs> we don't want to make people feel pressured. Uh, but we it. always have great new features, and one of the cool things coming down the pipeline is TypeScript. Um, Four four right, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, really cool things that are coming down uh, there. We have some new strictness flags for optional properties and for try catches, um, and we have some really cool stuff um, coming down the pipeline for um, just better index signatures. If you're familiar with that, but it's all it's all public, and you can go check out our iteration plan on GitHub, um, where we we actually have public release dates that are that we that we put out. Uh, public uh, features that you can get, get a look at, but but um, if you're if you're just learning TypeScript, I encourage you to check out the TypeScript uh, website, which is typescriptlang.org, um, and also just follow the Twitter account too, which is just TypeScript on Twitter. Uh, I think that that is you know a great way to start. I love that call to actions, everyone. Typescriptlang.org. <laughs> follow the TypeScript Twitter handle. Thank you so much for being here with us, Daniel. Thank you. Have a great build.